In this video, you'll learn how you can successfully make the leap from small and isolated customer experience initiatives to a true strategic and company-wide activity without spending years setting up structures and processes that nobody ends up using. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. My name is Kirsikka Vajakallio and this is the Service Design Show, episode number 166. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome back to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are those hidden and invisible things that make the difference between success and failure, all to help you design great services that have a positive impact on people, business, and our planet. Our guest in this episode is Kirsika Varakadio. She is a design principal and partner at Hallon, and Hallon is maybe one of the oldest and most experienced service design agencies out there. Now, I'm going to introduce this episode with a short story. Imagine that one day you decide that you want to adopt a healthier lifestyle. As a first step, you start buying healthier food in your grocery store. But of course, that's not going to be enough. You need to consider the broader environment, how you think and act across all areas of your life. Will you make physical exercise a daily routine? How will you improve sleep quality? Now let's take this one step further. Imagine that you're not going to adopt this lifestyle alone, but with your entire family. Now that's going to take a lot more coordination. And that brings us to today's topic, namely CX governance. Yes, that's right. Maybe not one of the most sexy topics to think about, but a crucial one, because it's the key difference between companies who are able to make the leap from small, often isolated CX initiatives to company-wide orchestrated activities. This leap in CX maturity is a challenging one. It requires a lot more coordination, a lot more commitment, and a lot more resources from the company. But once you get it right, it frees up a lot of time to focus actually on improving the customer experience rather than having to worry about setting all the right conditions. So if you stick around till the end of this episode, you'll learn what the most important elements are that go into a CX governance model, when you should start thinking about it, and what the single biggest reason is why companies fail to implement it. If you enjoy exploring topics like this that help you to grow as a service design professional, make sure to click that subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified when new episodes come out. That about wraps it up for the intro. Now it's time to jump into the conversation with Kirsika. Welcome to the show, Kirsika. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure nice to be to here. Nice to have you on. Yes, yeah, pleasure nice to, to be. have you on. <laughs> We're recording this at the end of December and the days are really, really short, especially uh, in Helsinki where you are, right? Yes, that's correct. At least you get, you still do get some sunshine. You told me that if you are in Lapland, then it's dark all the way. Yeah, yeah. We we might have, if we are lucky, a couple of hours of sunshine during the daytime. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, let's not uh, um, commiserate on that too long uh, because we have a fun conversation uh, planned. Uh, Kiska, before we dive into all these fascinating topics, uh, could you give a short introduction of who you are and what you do these days? Yes. Uh... So I'm currently working at the design agency called Hellon, and we have an, uh, offices in the Helsinki and London and in Oulu, in northern part of the Finland. And uh, we are specializing in helping different kind of organizations to improve their businesses from the customer experience point of view. So group of, group of uh, multidisciplinary experts. And uh, yeah, that's a great, great place to work. And Helen has been around for quite a while, right? Yeah. Yes, we are actually one of the oldest service design uh, companies, and I've also been working there over 10 years, and also I'm a partner, so it's a, yeah, it has been an exciting journey. I, I, uh, I've seen your name come by so often at the service design conferences, at different events. It's, uh, it's amazing that it took 166 episodes to have someone <laughs> from Helen on the show. I don't know what happened there, but uh, happy that you're here. Yeah. Um, 
thank you for that introduction. Uh, but we also always have a, a lightning round with five questions to get to know you as a person rather than a professional a bit better. Um, five simple question, your, uh, questions. Your task is to answer them as quickly and as briefly as possible. Just the first thing <laughs> that comes to your mind. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, Kiska. What did you want to become when you were a kid? I wanted to become a designer, industrial designer. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, which book a book are you reading at this moment, if any? Uh, I need to say that not any at the moment. Maybe mm -hmm. during the Christmas holiday, I hope something. Okay, let's see what's on your wish list there then. Mm. <laughs> what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Oh, that's, that's but uh, let's say sushi. Okay, okay. And uh, what was your very first job? Uh, I was uh, selling hot dogs in the ice hockey hall. <laughs> nice, great. <laughs> and the fifth and final question, we're blazing through this. Uh, do you recall the first moment you learned about service design? E yes, more or less. I was in uh, doing my master studies uh, in the, at the university and uh, we had the course with Finnair. Uh, and uh, I think that was the first time that we like uh, started to discuss that, uh, okay, service design, what's that's about? And we were like uh, uh, focusing on the Finner's uh, services, but still it was uh, mainly taking a bit of a product focus for the, like uh, looking at what kind of touch points there are in the end. But uh, I think that was one of the first encounters. Oh. Ah, 2000 nice. and, uh. 2004 or five. Early days, early, early days. Early days. Early days. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I got into, I first learned about service design, I think it was 2006, and that still was like uh, relatively early. Yes. Uh, but 2004, that was <laughs> pioneering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could say though. Nice. Uh, thank you for that introduction and uh, for all these uh, responses. Now, let's jump into the topic of today because it's the very um attractive and sexy topic of customer experience governance that's what we decided to discuss today um i think it's super interesting and definitely uh, a lot to explore there uh, let me start with this first question what are we talking about when we're talking about governance because that's uh i at least for me is also quite an ambiguous topic mm -hmm. What is governance? Can you give some examples maybe from mm -hmm. other areas that we sort of get familiar with this term? Yeah, I think that's also probably depends on the background the perspective that you have. But uh, from the designer's design perspective, when I'm talking about the governance or thinking about the governance, it's a lot about that what kind of uh, uh, roles, responsibilities, uh, structures, uh, like uh, different kind of forums, who is meeting where, uh how these are like regularly organized and and uh, that kind of thing so so and when we connect that to customer experience uh then it's of course uh, dealing with that uh who owns that topic in the company or in the organization and uh, all the different kind of activities related to that that help to like organize around it more systematically i was i was trying to uh see if there are maybe other areas where we are already very familiar with governance maybe mm -hmm. i don't know if we use that word like what could be some other areas that people might be familiar with and think yeah. oh, okay yeah. governance i get it yeah okay maybe maybe in general in the companies for example when you are working with most probably there are different kind of uh, uh, board meetings or, or different group of people who meet regularly and depending on they are typically in, in a certain level of the organization, they have own kind of meetings and where they are looking at some specific topic. Uh, and and uh, so it's, it's, I would say that it, uh, they are maybe having some sort of uh, tools they are using there, uh, there to develop the things that they are interested in or responsible in. And um, am I correct to say that um, 
governance is really also the act of, of making all these things explicit because you can mm. have like meetings all over the place, yeah. news yeah. tools all over the place. But I think you also use the word standardize. Yes. And like making it explicit is... is yeah, to have certain policies and, and, and the standard standards, uh, some kind of guidelines, what you are following so that you can show that, okay, this is how we actually work. So kind of describing some, somewhat that what we are, how we work. Exactly. Yeah. Describing how we work, what are the rules we play by, and um, again, trying to capture that and make sure that uh, uh, it's written down somewhere, that it's transferable, that uh, yes. we have something to point to, and again, uh, yes. rules, guidelines, processes. Um, you, right? It that's, sounds that's quite boring we're... now how you get it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, uh, uh, I, I'm thinking of games, like the, just uh, the games that you play. They also have rules. We don't that's call them true. governance. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but maybe maybe we could call them governance. But mm -hmm. uh, a game without rules is really not a lot of fun and it's mostly pretty confusing. So I can imagine like um, that this would uh, just help. Um, we're going to, uh, to sort of dissect this entire topic uh, in this conversation, but I'm also really curious, like, how's, how does someone get interested in a topic like customer experience governance? So how did you get into this? Well, uh, it always, or in my case, at least, it has been typically related to the organization's uh, transformation towards customer-centric way of thinking and doing. So, so there typically has been this kind of... Uh, need for rethinking the way that uh, in the in the organization they are organizing their work and 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 uh, and their goals uh, to better understand the customers that they are serving and the whole customer experience and from that point of view so i've been working with a different kind of organization who have had this idea that who oh, we would like to come we would like to become more customer centric uh, we would like to put more efforts on our customer experience. We would really understand uh, how that influences to us. And that has been then then like one part of this uh, kind of transformation at some point typically is that, okay, how you are then structured around this topic. I see a lot of people interested in this topic and sort of helping organizations to become more customer centric. I don't see that many service design professionals stumbling upon governance. Maybe it's my blind spot. So I'm, I'm really curious. Mm. Like, how, at what point did you think, hmm, maybe it's governance that I'm that I'm trying to grasp with? I, I think that one of my first uh, projects or, or like a collaboration with the company was uh, somewhere 2015, 16. And in that, that was uh, one of the like public uh, organizations in Finland. And uh, they actually first... Uh, asked our help uh, to improve their services. Of course, we are. I'm service designer as, as a background. So, uh, but when I I went into the company and I was there like uh, three days a week, sometimes even four days a week, and I just like participated to different kind of uh, uh, meetings, discussions, lunchtime conversations, trying to figure out that uh, what's going on there, how they actually. Uh, talk about their services, who are their customers. And at some point, quite soon, it was clear that it's not about the services that is the problem, but it's about how they are organized in the silos and how the, how, how the customers are only kind of seeing the, the different departments and, and business units from that organization and not actually the services. So they had like a built the services, really organizational uh, ground deed. And, and that was their first revolution. Okay, we need to actually uh, look at the inside first so that we can then change how it looks outside. I One of the uh, metaphors that I've been using in the past is like uh, services might be the software that runs on top of the hardware, which is the... Uh, organization and then you sort of have something in the middle which is the operating system mm. and the operating system is like if you put a service into an operating system that is not designed to sustain that service it's not going to work and i feel you're also hinting up on that yeah. like what like can we create an operating system where the services that we want to design actually can be designed and delivered yes exactly i think that's the quite uh, good way to put it 
So, mm. so if we only look at the, the services, uh, that may not be that it's possible to sustain them or develop them continuously. So we need to have uh, like uh, the processes and the people who are owning those and then, then all the capabilities and acknowledgement that is relating to that. So, so really like uh, having the like uh, enabling factor in a sense, maybe, maybe we can think about that as that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The enabling factors. And uh, I feel that we're often sort of run into debt as the challenges that uh, the enabling factors aren't there in place, but we don't have really a very good language to talk about that and to, to grasp yeah. that and to maybe design that. Um, now, I, I'm curious, when, what is your experience with when do organizations actually need to think about customer experience governance is that from day one or is it some sort of evolution what have you seen yeah I, <clears throat> i'm actually been thinking that quite a lot and is it necessary or not <laughs> and and uh, i think that that's that's a really contextual question in a sense that it really depends on the size of the company uh the way it it's like a legacy uh, and it's it's like a design and development legacy as well uh the, the, the field it operates in. Uh, but I think that quite often it's at, at least the, the experiences I have, it's at some point uh, when the maturity is uh, already there in a sense that you have uh, some internal capabilities, you have uh, some sort of ownership uh, for the customer experience, but it may not be yet explicitly in the C level, for example, but it's a little bit somewhere in the middle management level. And then the organization starts to see that things could get much smoother and much faster <laughs> uh, if there would be a little bit better uh, or, or let's say more systematic uh, way of like uh, uh, driving the decisions and, and uh, having the right people in those, uh, like uh, making those decisions and really like uh, uh, be able to prioritize between different kind of customer experience initiatives. Uh, and then at that moment, it's, it's quite often like uh, becomes this uh, moment of, aha, maybe we should think about that. Do we actually have appropriate uh, like a governance at the moment or should we develop it somewhere or change it a little bit? Uh, especially if there is uh, like the that it has been more in a silo, that one one part of the organization has been owning the customer experience and then you want to widen it up, you open it up, you start to think about this more holistic customer experience, uh, which goes uh, across the business units, for example. So that's typically uh, the moment that you need actually to start thinking about that what is this cross-functional way of uh, organizing that. Yeah, yeah, I totally recognize that. It's often this customer experience wave starts in small pockets in the organization yeah. some pioneers some brave souls who see the importance um and often it's also small pockets maybe at sea level uh like those are the two levels that you see it happening and then they start doing this they start working and um at some point you run into challenges scaling it up yes like you you can you can scale it up to a certain level from sort of these pocket sized uh initiatives but at some point you need well you you can't scale any further things become inefficient uh you get frustrated you you see that you need to do things repeatedly and i think what you're saying is that's when you need to make the jump from okay we need to look at governance institutionalize yes. this right exactly exactly that's uh, that's how i see it that sounds to me like a very big leap and a leap where a lot of people don't mm. make it across to the next uh, side. Can you can you maybe uh, take us through some of the things you've seen of how do we actually make this leap from these smaller initiatives, smaller pockets, people who are excited to, mm -hmm. okay, now we need to look at this from cross silos, cross function, how do we how do we make this leap without falling in, off the cliff? I think there is no like a one one uh, solution or answer. But uh, what I've recognized that at least one thing that you need 
is to have a really high level top management uh, sponsorship. It may not be yet the full like uh, uh, board that is on board it, but uh, at least there are one or two people who really from the top see that we we need to do this. And and with those people, then you can start building a clear connection with the business value. So that's, I think, the, the key that uh, you need to be able to show the business value and th- get then the more and more people interested in, because otherwise it stays easily in, in uh, this silo that, okay, it's just one part of the organization who are dealing with this customer experience. It's nice to have. We have it, of course. Everyone nowadays has it in the strategic uh, text that it's set there that we want to be best in the field or whatever, but it's uh, not always open up that well that explicitly that people don't really understand. So when you create the clear uh, business case connection there, why you need to start looking it more broadly and across the organization, that's the key. So let's talk a little bit about this, because this is one of those things also easy to say, like you need uh, uh, sponsorship yeah. at uh, the sea level and you need to come up with a business case. I w- I'm really curious, how do you, like, what have you seen around this business case? Like, how do you convince, quote unquote, uh, or, or seduce C-level people to actually make this investment? Because it is, I think, quite an investment. Yeah. How do these conversations go? What have you seen? Uh, I think it's it's uh, step by step. So so th- there need to be some level of uh, interest uh, to begin with, because you need to have a time for these conversations with these people. You need to be able to dig in for the different uh, examples from the different fields. Uh, what could it look like? What the, You need to be able somehow to create the image that what the crate looks like, what the ready looks like when we have this governance uh, working. So let's see, like after two, three years, so, so where we are, what we gain. So, so helping to build this vision state somehow uh, quite explicitly. Uh, and then, then you need to be, what I, what I typically do always is that uh, to start with, uh, I do the interviews. So quite simple thing, <laughs> interviewing people in the organization in different roles uh, from the top, all those people that you think that should be involved or engaged, or at least uh, like somehow favoring that. <laughs> Uh, to to be able to get resources and and time and investment, so so I do the interviews uh, and trying to really understand that uh, where they are at the moment, what they think that in their organization works well at the moment, what maybe doesn't work, uh, and try to find that where the customer experience uh, fits in in that sense, that what other purposes it could serve somehow, so that it's not just the customer experience in itself, but these people typically have a quite uh, stressful, uh, like, uh, how, how to say, they have a lot of uh, different KPIs they need to be fulfilling, they are focusing in. So if I can somehow identify where these connect uh, and they can see that actually then I can get help and support from these people who are already in that and, and can actually actually help me to take me where I'm going as well. So, so, so that's at least uh, this kind of pra- kind of practical step in these conversations. Then, then I think that uh, you need to be able after that to somehow do the some sort of analysis or like uh, uh, make those insights into more actionable ideas. That what could it mean for you? And then having this common sense making sessions or or workshops or, or or places for the dialogue, so that all these important stakeholders can then based on your findings, you can already prepare quite nice and well, well taught uh, exercises or perspectives and, and so these uh, probable plus minus things. <laughs> uh, so, so, so I think that's, that's the, one of the key things to start with is this understanding the organization, doing these interviews and trying to connect the customer experience to other targets. Yeah. And that's, so good that you're mentioning this because it's all about contextualizing this exactly. stuff and uh so often we are so excited about what we do and how important it is and the funny thing is uh you're not selling customer experience governance it's a means to an end right yes and you have to figure out what the end is and you figure that out like you said for instance by interviewing 
C-level people, you need to get access to them and figure out, okay, are they focused on growth? Are they focused on operational excellence, shareholder value? Yes. And your task is then to see if something like customer experience governance, CX governance can help to achieve those goals. If it can't, like you'll have a really hard time implementing it correct exactly exactly and and of course then you need to think about it that okay maybe the maturity isn't ready yet for that so so or that there is a like a light version or one thing is as well that as you said that it's really contextual so in some of the organizations i've been working with the cx governance uh, covers the whole hierarchical structure in a sense so that there are there are the explicit place for the top management to be part of these uh, discussions and there are like uh, one layer below and one layer below so that it goes all the way. Whereas in some organizations, it's mainly in the maybe, for example, in more middle part of the organization. And then there is just the owner, like a uh, sponsorship in the really top so that uh, it's in the agenda there every now and then, but it's not like uh, the main focus of those people, but it happens a little bit lower, especially if it's a smaller organization that may be just fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, I, I guess that's one of the biggest pitfalls. Don't focus on the actual topic, like figure out, figure out, figure out what the organization needs, mm -hmm. what they are heading, what they are heading to in the next three years and see how you can help there. Um, and that's also, I think, related to what you mentioned around paint a future state in two or three years. Uh, that needs to that needs to be focused on the company goals and not pers not at all around CX governance. Or, exactly. Right? Yeah. But but I think also also uh, one not necessary in 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 uh, in all cases, but some cases uh, even in in a company that uh, which seems to be mature in a, in the CX in a sense that they have a quite clear ownership for it and. Uh, uh, like uh, initiatives to to develop it, but still they are lacking this uh, red line or this kind of like a common vision that would go or common customer experience principles that would go across the organization, and that may be sometimes quite powerful and practical tool that if you can in the beginning to engage these uh, key stakeholders to build this a uh, little bit more explicit customer experience vision than they have maybe in the strategic level where they might have these targets that, you know, let's be the best in the field, <laughs> but it's not really like opened up that what does it mean then actually, how does it fit and look like in different kind of customers or who are the key customers? Or, so it's also a lot about making decisions, making things visible uh, so that people know where we are going and then then using those in, as a tools to like uh, guide the path. Yeah, and and uh, I would I would translate this in my own language. Like the first needs to be a problem. And uh, uh, like if you set a vision for how, the, how you want to be, how the customer experience should be in your company, how customers should perceive you. Uh, if you don't have that, then like there is no problem that needs to be solved, right? There, like any any experience then there would be good. So creating that awareness first, like you yes. said, maybe painting a scenario, creating a picture like we as a company want to be like this. And then you can say, okay, to get there, we need, we need something. We need yes. things that can help us on our way. Um, so let's 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 maybe look into a few practical examples because you said okay, let's imagine we have buy-in from the top. People see their importance. People want to go where we sort of want to go. And you said then we sort of uh, try to turn this into tangible, actionable initiatives. What are some common things that you see in those kind of plans? First of, first of all, I think that maybe going a little bit still back, uh, I listened to one of your earlier like uh, service design shows about the uh, customer journey mapping. And, and uh, I liked uh, how it was described that it's, it's also a design task uh, to get people involved and, and really see it uh, like, uh, like from that perspective. So, so how I see CX governance, it's a design task. So that's why you need to understand these, uh, the 
who, to whom you are designing it for. So who are the users of that like a governance? So, so and who will be affected by it? And, and uh, start drawing it, so making it <laughs> as a visual. So where does it sit? So what are the functions in this organization? Who are the people here? And, and what are the services? So what are the products and, and how this is now? And then trying to see that, okay, from this picture, this image, who should be actually brought in here so that we can have this uh, like uh, wide enough perspective uh, for the customer experience experience, uh, but at the same time for the organization itself. Uh, and and uh, so, so I, I would like to see it as, as an image or visual. As <laughs> a map. As a map, kind of as a map. And, and then, then like uh, when, when having those people involved, so you, you of course, uh, and having this uh, more business target. So that's one super important thing to be clear. What's the business target, the key business target for us? Is it to increase the loyalty? Is it to, uh, like uh, transform our customers into the digital services? Or what's the key thing in the mind that you need to be thinking? Because then those different um, customer experience initiatives kind of come from there, that where we are actually going and where we are. And, and uh, that's why it's also links actually this customer uh, journey mapping quite much, because that's one tool, for example, then uh, to understand that where you are now from this uh, customer's perspective and when you have and create the vision where you want to be. And then you can start to see where you are and which part of the organization especially are related to these things that we need to be started improving or changing. So um, I get that, and uh, definitely I see the the value of journey mapping. But maybe that's uh, uh, tied to specific services. If, if I'm I'm looking for, and I'm curious about, mm -hmm. like, if we zoom out and look at the operating system, or like I don't know the game manual. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you feel are elements that are that should always be in this? Yeah. manual like if we have a piece of paper or a map yeah. and it says cx governance like what are some of the areas that, that we yes. at least should think about and should make explicit yeah yeah of course the the ownership for the customer experience and in different levels that's that's the one thing uh who will own in what kind of uh, forums you need that where you are discussing about it or sharing the experiences, who is going to develop it? So, so what's your development system? But then, then one of the key thing is the data. So, so uh, what kind of processes there are on place for the customer data to understand the customers in in a, as like a 360 way as possible. Uh, and, and uh, so that's, if you don't have it yet, you need to have because the CX forum is quite uh, powerless without that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's in that sense, I see that as a crucial part there, that what kind of processes and tools. And that's, of course, then it comes back to that. Where do you use that data? Who uses that? And that's, again, the governance model in a sense that who are there, where they get this kind of data, what they do with that, and who has the decision-making power as well. Uh, and, and of course, the, the idea is not to add hierarchy or complexity in the organization. So that's, that's uh, some of the challenges there that easily you just add things on while you should at the same time try to see that are there already actually natural places? Are there already forums or group of people who meet regularly uh, where you could actually take this into agenda and, uh, and uh, support by this uh, just uh, making, for example, better processes around the data? So, so, so those are those are like uh, at least uh, some building blocks. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, uh, data ownership, a forum, uh, processes, tools, decision making power. Like those are the typical things you would make explicit. Yes. Around the customer experience governance, right? Yes, exactly. And then, of course, to make it more complicated, it's then it starts to become clear is that uh, the capabilities uh, from the more like a people perspective that, okay, do we need actually new roles? Uh, 
uh, you need to train people, who we need to train, do we need to build the tools that gives us more common vocabulary around this or, or these kind of things. And uh, like a meta question is, uh, one of the things we make explicit in the CX governance is ownership. Who owns the initiative to uh, initiate the CX ownership? Is that the service design professional or like? I think that's that's varies uh, uh, in a comp like uh, depends on uh, company by company. So so in some companies it has. Uh, um, it's more naturally in the marketing department, so maybe they can they can be being the ones who initiate that actually we should have it uh, clearly owned or we should have a more better governance. Uh, but quite often, I think it's those uh, like uh, ser not service designers, but more about the like uh, business owners or something like that, who has this feeling that I'm not going to be able to move forward where I want before we have this clarified that who actually owns this. Uh, but then, of course, service designer can be helping like me, for example, to make sense of it and make it as a, this kind of a design task so that you start trying to understand and figure out what would be appropriate uh, model for it. Yeah, I can imagine that this absolutely needs to be a multi or inter or a transdisciplinary activity because like uh, when you talk about capabilities and roles you need to have hr involved when you have yes. when you talk about data you need maybe data scientists um so uh i don't th I, I i couldn't imagine that a service designer would be uh like the the lead in this initiative but could be an enabler or definitely a big role to support this yeah. process yes and i think it's also also like a interesting topic i don't have there any any good good uh, like answers but i'm of course always like external <laughs> and then then so i need to have this really good relationship and close people the one who who wants me to help to make it <laughs> so 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 the one that i'm working with. And those are typically, like I said, not the service designers, but the, who understands about service design, who are keen on uh, like developing the customer experience and whether their background is in the business or in the, in the marketing or, or in the development, they are the ones who see the benefit of making it a bigger and more systematic common goal for everyone. Now, Let's imagine that we've put this team together. We see the need for uh, CX governance. Uh, we've created a, a good plan. We've put things on paper. How do you, how do you then make it stick? Because mm. I, I can totally see that this becomes a, a, a beautiful slideshow, beautiful presentation, great initiatives. And then when the rubber hits the road, like six months later, People are scratching their head and thinking, didn't, didn't we do something around CX governance? Like, yeah, and you, <clears throat> yes, that's that's a correct, and that's that's a real risk uh, here, and and that's what maybe the challenge is that uh, it's quite. One of my one of my uh, like uh, customers said said to me once that yeah we are one well, now see backward like a couple of years at what we've been doing also together that that we've been able to achieve a lot and we have progressed a lot so we have now this and that processes in system we have this and that like a tools there and this structure and all. but what where we are still struggling is the mindset so the more cultural is so more of what it actually mean uh, when we want to behave and think more user-centric way so so it's quite easy as long as you still like it's just the let's let's uh, create a tool or, or these meetings and structures but then that what actually people are how they really breathe that <laughs> so so that's the more more difficult part and that's why i recommend always that it's good to have the external person for quite a long in the journey to remind that the customer experience why we are here help to like uh, create the agendas for these uh, meetings but also to help to create the different like in, in all customer uh, centric transformations so helping to create different 
size of uh, development initiatives around it so that you have all the time something that you can follow and wait for that now we get quite soon some some concrete examples why we are doing this but then you also have this longer term that you need to really be waiting and a little bit more putting efforts on all the time so i think this that you are able to follow the progress and that comes to the data part again and creating the like uh, clear targets that what you're trying to aim so that you can all the time follow in this cx governance different like meetings that there are the different forums and group of people that you can like, engage them in seeing that actually things will change when we are doing this together uh, yeah and uh, so good that you mentioned this because i can imagine that this is so easy to overlook and like <clears throat> it buying or implementing a new tool or setting up some dashboards to measure things or defining new roles and capabilities like that's super concrete and tangible and i can totally see that people start running with that and mm. like yeah we we are making progress but um what you're saying is if the the mindset of the organization isn't evolving at the same time uh, you will have a great tool but people won't be ready or the organization won't be ready to make to take full advantage of it or yes. something something like that yes so so i think there's a uh, quite a lot of efforts at the same time need to be put on the like uh, Maybe, maybe like a telling the stories of the customers and these different kind of good and bad ex experiences and examples and, and uh, also like uh, showcasing the good, even the small things and changes so that people can get the understanding that what it means and they can uh, helping people to see their own role there. Because I think that's the biggest challenge, in a, especially in a, in, a, in a bigger organizations that there are a lot of those people who are not in the front line but whose work is, is super critical and important, but they still tend to think about it, that although there would be this, that yes, I'm ma making these decisions maybe on that, but still it's quite far away. So you need to be helping them to reflect and see their own like uh, uh, importance in this picture. And that, that uh, I'm making some assumptions here, but I can imagine that that's the hardest thing to mm -hmm. sort of sell because uh, anyone can see how a tool might be helpful to get like how it fixes a gap but when you need to sell we are going to tell stories in the organization for the next three years to change the mindset like you have to you have to have a good story like how do you make a business case for that uh, that right that's yeah and i think that's, that's why you need to be continuously uh, enough involved and that's why i think that there needs to be either a lot of a really good like a close uh, um, like working relationship between uh, for example me and my my customer from the organization or the internal people uh, a lot of supporting it because you need to be understanding that what kind of discussions there are going on so that you can always grasp on those that it doesn't like uh, uh, happen so that it start to be the sidetrack <laughs> that you started that in the middle but all of it slides a little bit uh, if you know what I mean, and then uh, then it's not in the those topics anymore that people are talking about and interested in. So you need to be all the time re reflecting, and that's why I also think that although you need to be super clear in the beginning, what's the long term target, what's the what's the business goal, why you need this kind of structure that need to be really clear and connected to this uh, like a future state where you want to be, and also the the what's the money point of view there, uh -huh. but but yeah. at the same time like really really like being flexible you need to have these reflection points does it work like we've been now a little bit like a pilot starting maybe again like a piloting uh and then uh, then being open for it that okay for some reason it doesn't work we have wrong people involved we are in the wrong level on our working we we are not too big project in it we haven't been actually making the prioritizing as we should be and so you it's it's a long-term learning process at the same time I think that's a very healthy way to approach this as an iterative process and keep on reflecting. Uh, my mind was uh, sort of wandering off while you were mentioning this. And I was thinking about uh, another metaphor around maybe uh, living a healthy lifestyle. It's not just enough to buy healthy food. Like you can buy healthy food. That's the easy part. You go to the, to the yes. grocery store and you buy healthy food. But um, your long-term vision should be that you want to be able to play with your grandkids when you are 70 like that's that's the big vision 
And when you, I think, lose that side of that vision and just focus on buying healthy food, one, it will be really hard to sustain because yes. like the next day you sort of forget to buy healthy food and you have to keep reminding yourself why you're doing this. Yeah, I like that metaphor. Yeah, I like it because that's exactly that. You easily buy the gadget and, and you know, the things that kind of help you, but then uh, you should all the time thinking about it, where you are going and when you uh, mature for something or you reach some step, then you should change a little bit. Maybe the steps that how you go there, the goal is there, but how you move, that may be like a different in a different times as well. Yeah, and that goal should be almost, not almost, should, should become a mantra. Like you, mm. you stand, yeah. you stand up, and in, uh, in the morning, in the front of the mirror, you sort of <laughs> repeat where you're heading to. And it sounds really silly, but I think that uh, that might be like and the, the magic ingredients mm. for getting these things to actually work and stick. Yes, yes, something something easy to remember again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and something that you repeat. Stick, um, yeah. What do you think uh, is the question someone should ask themselves before they embark on this journey? So maybe they are listening to this conversation mm. and think, oh, that sounds really good. What is, what, is, what is the question they should ask before they invest their time, energy, passion, money? Mm -hmm. I think the, the starting point is to think about that. Uh, are we ready for it? In a sense that what's our maturity level, how we are organized at the moment? Do we actually have this in place, but it's not explicit. So it might be even a smaller task. We actually have it almost there, but making a little bit the next leap and making visible or, or is it that uh, it's, it's, uh, we are still discussing a totally different language in the different parts of the organization. So we first need to just uh, try to raise awareness and the common language and not let's... So, so, so it's also trying to understand that where you are in the maturity level, that uh, how, how well organized you are in this uh, customer experience perspective. Yeah, so you mentioned awareness is one. Is there even awareness? Is there language? Are we doing something around this? Um, and if not, then that might be a good first step. Uh, if there is already something in place, can we make it more efficient? That's yes, basically exactly. Can, is there something to make more efficient? Yeah, <laughs> like I think <clears throat> I think one thing is 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 also like uh, this, um, like what we discussed earlier, this uh, customer understanding and data. So so. Do you know your customers at the moment or not? So that's also something that we quite but often think. But that's a hard think. question. Like, mm. uh, do you, how do you answer that? Do we know our customers? Well, I think that uh, when you start looking at that, okay, do we make assumptions or do we actually actually know based on the like the qualitative and quantitative data that when we see that what the customers are actually doing, are we using that data? We probably have it, but are we using it? Are we sharing it? Are we discussing about it? If not, then we don't probably know <laughs> what our customers are actually doing, although we might have the data there available. Uh, so, so it's also that do we make these things uh, tangible, visible, something that we are discuss. Are we discussing this topic or not? That's a, maybe one of the like mm. easy thing. Are we really discussing yeah. what the customer experience mean? What is the state at the moment? Where we want to go? Is it is it a topic on the agenda? And if it's not yet on the agenda, what would you advise? Then, then, then really thinking that uh, who would be, if you are interested and you would like that to be, that okay, who are your alliance <laughs> who, uh, from the organization? Uh, listening maybe the top management talk that who from there might be something that could be like uh, interested in hearing more and, and uh, thinking so how you can then from small to try to go up. Yeah, so you mentioned building the alliance or building allies. Um, that's probably the first step. Like if you're if you feel that you're going to be the only one who cares about this, then probably you need to take a few steps back. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And th th this was the other question that I had, like, is this something that you can start small and scale? Mm -hmm. Or as you previously said, like you need top level sponsorship. Is this something that actually needs to start with, with uh, more serious, a bigger budget, bigger investment? I, I think you can start with the smaller steps in the sense that uh, becoming more systematic uh, 
in in like a drawing first this that uh, who are, what are the forums that are talking about uh, or, or or looking at the customer experience at the moment can i bring there a little bit more still the systemacy or the, the customer experience uh, point of view uh, like uh, can i just uh, create the one like uh, like in in many organizations i don't know if that's not the, like uh, full governance yet but there are the parts for example might be this kind of survey design morning or breakfast discussions or where people share their like uh, experiences from the front line or whatever so so there might be this kind of small initiacy that when you start to like build a bigger picture so so how these connect how you can maybe systemize those and by bringing small elements or one people who actually are involved of everything uh and and like uh, start making this red line between these different things and then mm. if you have an opportunity to start like uh, uh, uh i don't know to report <laughs> somehow to the top management that what's happened in these smaller uh like uh, forums and and places yeah and uh, when you mentioned this one of the things i was thinking and wanted to ask but i already have the answer to this question is like what is the how do you convince top level management to move from these small initiatives to a more company-wide organized initiative i think i'm going to fill the answer in but i think the answer is it depends on what the priorities are of the organization right mm, otherwise yeah. you, you it won't it won't resonate exactly if if they are not yet interested in and you are not able to show this connection to their like uh, targets so then it's not going to fly most probably yeah 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 so that's you need to you need to work on both fronts you need to find your allies and see where their pockets are of people who are interested and passionate about this and on the other front you need to figure out how do i connect this to what the company currently measures values and where we want to be in three years and then if you have those two ingredients then the chances for success definitely go up uh yeah yes i think that was a nice summary thanks that was a, <laughs> it wasn't all that bad yeah. no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which questions uh or question do you still have around this topic anything i don't know if it keeps you awake but what are you curious about well, well, I think that the, the biggest challenge that uh, in, in each case when I'm working with this kind of topic is always this, that how I'm engaging those people and convincing those people who are not yet totally convinced. So how I find this, although I'm interviewing, so do I really hear where there is the opportunity? Do I really see and then can identify? So, so, so that's the... Uh, thing that maybe if something wakes me up <laughs> uh, during the night it's it's that that okay can i can i identify that i think that's this is the like uh, so contextual uh, so much to learn i think this is a topic that i'm never ready in in that mm. sense that it's mm. uh, every case brings a little bit new angle a bit new emphasis a bit new way of adopting uh, things so so that's why it's also super interesting uh but all these questions that we've been discussing today, I'm still asking those from myself when I start the project. Mm. Is this the oh, maturity that's... level the, the right and, and, and should we try to push this or not? So do we have uh, enough success factors as we were mapping there? And so, so I think those are the things to really consider. And best practices would be wonderful to see, but I think it's it should be always not, not how it's on place, but it should be the long-term journey and that's difficult to find. Yeah, yeah. And on the one hand, it's also comforting that uh, it's an ongoing journey. You still, you're always learning and uh, like, don't let the fact that you don't have experience with this stop you from uh, starting. No, exactly. Goes. I think that's, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a collaboration uh, effort, as you said earlier, that you need the different people with you. So, so bringing different people and making this uh, your common design task. So you solve it together. That's the way to do it. Uh, let me ask you this question. If, um, what do you hope is the one thing somebody will take away from our conversation today? If they just remember one thing after six years or a year I, want, I wanted to say six months or a year but maybe after six years who knows what is the one thing you hope that they will re remember that that it 
really makes sense to think if you can make this kind of uh, uh, customer experience related decisions more systematic uh, by building a bit better uh, CX governance model around it. So, so the systematically in that sense, that it, that's what it brings for you. Great. Let's hope uh, people will take away that. And if you <laughs> took away something else, leave a comment. Let us know what you yeah. what you took away from this conversation. We would love to hear. Uh, Kiska, thanks so much for coming on uh, and discussing this topic. I find it super fascinating. And like you said, it's big, it's holistic, it's ambiguous, but that doesn't stop us from exploring what it could be or where it's heading. And uh, I hope that we provoked some people and inspired some people to yeah, to experiment, to try and to prototype and see how far they get. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was uh, really interesting to try to dig in this topic and uh, explore a little bit the different perspectives. What is your takeaway from this conversation? Make sure to leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear. My name is Mark Fontaine and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Service Design Show and I hope to catch you very soon in the next video.